could not be more excited to sign into law legislation that will make sure all employees of the city and city contractors earn what they deserve, which is a minimum wage of $15 an hour. We're looking forward to the day when the state will allow us to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour for every Philadelphia worker, every Pennsylvania worker. As important as having a living wage is, I also can't overstate how critical it is for workers across the city to have consistent schedules each and every week. If your schedule is changing weekly or even daily, then it's incredibly difficult to arrange childcare, schedule medical appointments, and plan your day-to-day -day life. The bottom line is that employees need to know in advance when they're scheduled to work. One, our fair work week bill is going to help many Philadelphia workers have more stability. They're going to be better positioned to get ahead and stay ahead. Together, these measures are going to make a very meaningful impact in the lives of many Philadelphians. And I'm so proud of both pieces of legislation that I'm about to sign when everyone's finished speaking. I want to applaud City Council for passing these bills to support our workers. Once again, the Council has put the needs of working Philadelphians at the forefront of their legislative agenda. I'd like to especially recognize Councilwoman Helen Gim and Councilman Mark Squilla for their leadership and for being such strong advocates of this legislation, along with uh, Councilman Green uh, Greenleaf that's here. Uh, and I'm also very grateful for the support of Power, the AFL-CIO, and so many other labor leaders and organizations who have really been leading the charge to protect our workers' rights. So thank you all, and now I'd like to turn it over to Councilwoman Helen Gibb. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and thank you to everybody in this room. This is a fantastic day for Philadelphia, and uh, it speaks volumes to where we are as a city. Um, I spent the last part of, of the better part of the last year listening to the stories of working Philadelphians all across the city. Um, I'm grateful for each and every one of, of folks who came forward, stepped forward, and told us the stories of what it means to live, work, raise a family, go to school, um, dream of a city that is better than the one that we have today. Um, to talk about how much you loved your families, to care for them, especially your children, um, and, and the promise of a better future um, that we can build today. So today is for all of you. And um, today is for all the working moms and dads out there who are juggling multiple jobs, um, simply to put a roof over their heads and food on the table or to hold their families together. Today is for uh, you know every working Philadelphian um, who knows that one job should be enough. It's for every young person and every returning citizen who's working towards a better life for themselves. It's for the phenomenal advocates, organizers, and civil, civic and faith leaders in our city, our business leaders, who are working together to make this a better city for everybody. And today, in this city, which is the poorest city in the country, it matters that we say that poverty is not inevitable that we make choices about poverty each and every day, and it's a problem that we can do something about. So the Fair Work Week law, together with a $15 an hour minimum wage, is a guarantee not for a $15 minimum wage guarantee for city workers, um, puts forward an economic dignity promise to all Philadelphians, that no matter what's happening in DC or Harrisburg, this is still our city, and we are gonna look out for our people. So things this big don't happen alone. They happen in concert with the huge coalition that came together that spans the diversity and breadth of this phenomenal city um, that I love. Fantastic partners in healthcare and child advocates, educators and teachers, to democratic socialists, one Pennsylvania, civic groups, our faith community and clergy who brought home the moral argument, to our business community, including our vibrant independent businesses, Sustainable Business Network, and so many more. In my first term, I'm really grateful to be part of a city council that has been a national leader in passing legislation like paid sick leave. Thank you so much to my partners, my, my council president, Daryl Clark, who guided me through a complicated process, to, the, to my council members here today, Councilman Mark Squilla and Councilman Greenlee. Um, I do, I'm, I'm, I express my deepest gratitudes and, and, uh, and Councilman Cam Maria Quinones Sanchez, who is there right at the forefront with us, right at the beginning, even before this started out. I also want to thank Mayor Kenny and his terrific uh, team, and especially Deputy Mayor Rich Laser for partnering with us and being such a fantastic advocate.
I want to take a moment just to acknowledge a few other people. Bill Sasso, who is here today representing the Chamber of Commerce Executive Leadership Team, and AFL-CIO President Patrick Eiding, um, who's represented here by Danny Bowder. You both were instrumental in building out an engagement process that proves that partnership on anti-poverty measures can work for citizens, for business, and for a better city. So thank you. And um, I also want to take a minute and just thank my staff. Um, oftentimes in government, <laughs> council members get to sit at a podium, we'll be the, behind the bill signing, but this um, bill and this fight has been led by, uh, by my staff, a fierce, relentless, uncompromising crew of dreamers and obsessives who believe that when people power, meet smart policy, nothing's impossible. You prove it every day. It's amazing to work with you. So. so anyway, our politics are only as strong as our movements. We're talking about what that means here today, and I'm grateful to be part of all of this. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman Helen Ginn. Thank you so much for your leadership on this. And I want to say uh, this has been a long road. Uh, we, as you heard about the um, Fair Work Week uh, scheduling legislation, but uh, also the $15 an hour legislation. It's been going on for many years. And uh, I, uh, as the mayor was running for office, he had made this one of his main priorities uh, to try to get this 15 hour uh, wage. Uh, put into the city of Philadelphia. And meeting with power, I remember we were at a July, July 4th uh, ceremony down with um, uh, Kate Esposito that came up to me and said, would you support a $15 an hour wage increase in the city of Philadelphia? And it was during the immigration, people were get, becoming new uh, American citizens and I was all excited about it. I said, oh, sure, yeah, why not? <laughs> Let's do it. And uh, we did it, it took a couple years but we did it, but we didn't do a lot of hard work, and I, I got to thank Power and um, the Reverend so much for everything that you have um, given us, the spiritual guidance, guidance and also the force behind uh, the throne, because without the leadership from the community, this does not happen. It does not happen without advocacy that's coming in uh, from our community groups and from our, our union uh, partners. Um, SEIU is a big part of it, Unite Here, obviously, and as you see, AFL-CIO, and you'll be hearing from Danny a little shorter, but Pat Eiding was a big part of pushing this agenda forward. And our big, our big statement we always made was, let's lead by example, right? Let's make that initial push, and as you see, Jefferson, I'm proud to be in my district, has now followed us and also done the same thing, and we hope many more will do that. But this doesn't happen without great leadership from the top, and I do want to thank uh, Deputy Mayor Rich Laser, who was there with us, fighting the fight and, and working with the administration as we work so well together, end up becoming an administration bill, and uh, which is great. We all agreed. Um, so uh, it's a proud moment for us here in the city of Philadelphia. And again, though, we could not have done it without without the groups that are really advocating for this on the ground floor, working together to make a difference in our great city. And uh, hopefully other cities will follow along with us and other businesses will now see the benefits of increased wages and moving the needle on poverty so that we can then become people of this, uh, the city of Philadelphia, the working people that really make a difference and are the power behind the throne, everybody who's out there and votes for us here in, in the city government. So thank you so much. Congratulations to everybody associated with these great feats. Thank you to the mayor again for what you have done. Thank you to Rich Laser. And now we're going to bring up uh, Danny Bowder from AFL-CIO. And um, appreciate your support. On behalf of uh, President Pat Eiding and uh, the 150,000 workers, union members in Philadelphia and beyond that make up the Philadelphia Council AFL-CIO, I say, what a wonderful day for working people in Philadelphia. I want to thank uh, Councilwoman Gim and Councilman Squilla for their important leadership on improving the lives of thousands of working people here in the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. Thank you, Mayor Kenny, for your strong support of these two bills and your commitment to signing them today. And thank you to Deputy Mayor Richie Laser. 
uh, for your support and testimony in, in favor of this important legislation. Uh, I want to thank our union affiliates, the Philadelphia Federation of Teachers, Communication Workers, Local 13,000, uh, United Food and Commercial Workers, 1776 KS, and of course, Unite Here, Local 274, uh, for the work that you do every day for your members and for leading the change to raise the standard of living so that many workers in Philadelphia who don't have the benefit of a collective bargaining agreement yet can receive uh, this kind of security and protection uh, in their workplace. These wins for workers come after a year of organizing, meeting, deliberating, and even marching in the streets. People-powered movements continue to succeed in Philadelphia, whether it be the drive for paid sick time, justice for service workers in hotels and at the airport, fair wages and standards on construction sites, or a predictable work schedule. Working people are winning and are truly blessed to have an advocate like our mayor, Jim Kenney. Thank you very much. And it's, it's my pleasure to introduce Reverend Gregory Holston from Power. And, uh, my name is Reverend Gregory Holston, the Executive Director of Power. Power is 65 plus, now moving to about 100 congregations across the city of Philadelphia in our surrounding counties and now building out in Lancaster, uh, Harrisburg and, and Allentown areas. We are building communities of opportunity that work for all. Faith is the foundation of everything we do and racial justice is at the center of all of our work. And we're so proud to be here with these two bills being signed together. As uh, uh, Councilwoman Hel Helen Glenn has said, a uh, uh, historic anti-poverty legislation that has been produced. And so we want to thank, uh, first of all, uh, for the $15 minimum wage, which we led and did so much work on. Uh, Councilman Squilla for all of his work. Uh, really, um, we needed a champion. Uh, we <laughs> talked to just about everybody and had to catch you on uh, where we caught you at, but we got you at the right time. Uh, and, but we're so glad that we were able to build a relationship with you and how you looked at the legislation and, and, and just said, this, just, this is something we should do. And, and with, a, with a, a keenness and awareness that moved it forward, that brought it to the administration, uh, we're so thankful for all of your work to bring all of your colleagues together and we're thankful for all of the council people who voted for this bill. We're also thankful for the mayor, as uh, was indicated, the mayor did run on this issue and as we were just joking and talking about it, it takes a little time sometimes to get to <laughs> where we need to get to, but we're so thankful we're standing here together today to build out and to build a real change in our city and we thank you for your efforts and all the work you do every day. And also your staff, your wonderful staff, led by Rich Laser, who was always there for us as we talked over the numbers and fought over the numbers and, and uh, did what we had to do. And you had some strong negotiators. Uh, uh, the uh, Power Economic Dignity Team worked you over a little bit, just like they worked me over every now and then. But we managed to get it done, so we thank you, Rich, as well. Um, and so I will thank our Power Economic Dignity Team for all the work they've done. This has been a three-year process for us of working together. So if they would just stand for a moment, I just want them to be acknowledged. Though All those who are here, uh, co-chairs, Kate Esposito, Terry Burgeon, Paula Paul, Kyle Duncan, Francis Upshaw, and our staff, organizer on it as well. Jordan, stand up on Jordan. Let's give our staff a hand for all the work. Thank you all, thank you so much uh, for putting up with me uh, through the process, but uh, we managed to get it done and the success stays with you and that team and all the people that's a much bigger team, all the team that does all the work to make a difference in our city. I want to thank our allies as well. I want to thank uh, uh, SEIU and their work around this bill, but also uh, Unite Here for all of what you do. We can always count on Unite Here to be at every hearing. 
turn out at every council meeting. We love you, we appreciate you, and we appreciate all of your efforts. You are not just changing uh, uh, the hospitality industry in this city. You are changing Philadelphia as a whole, and you all should be very proud of all the work you do. And yes, one job should be enough. And so all of the allies that were a part of all of these bills, we are so excited to be with you. And I guess this is a moment in time where we can recognize of what was built here to be able to pass these two bills by such a wide margin. Uh, that both of these bills were talked about two years ago as dead on arrival. That there would not be any support for these two bills. But the allies that have come together, the teams of people that have worked together, the, the energy that has come together to shape a new agenda for our city is a precious moment in time when you realize that it all come together to sign these bills. But it's a recognition not just for this moment in time, but also what can be if we decide to build together and work together and remain allies and to build a new agenda for our city. For, for we know that this is the poorest big city in, uh, in, the, in the country. And for we know that this 26% poverty rate is just too much. And for we know that 14% of our people that live in deep poverty, almost 200,000 people, is intolerable and has been intolerable for a long, long time. We know all of these things. And now we have the capacity to change it. Now we have the capacity to build a brighter way for everyone. Now we can remain together and continue to work together and continue to come up with new strategies and new legislation and new initiatives to really bid a dent into that poverty reign. We know these bills will do that. They will take a dent out, that they will cause mothers who, who could not afford it to be able to take care of their children better. We know that families and marriages will stay together more because they now have more income, because income is one of the main reasons marriages fail. We know that children will do better in school when they have food uh, on the table and a decent meal that is provided, uh, and, and we have the resources now to help them do that. We know that we can build a better city by just getting better wages for our workers right, and wages for our people we can build a better life here in Philadelphia. And so we will no longer have these two cities, one poor and one rich, one black and one white. We can have a city where we all come together and believe together and hope together and dream together and stand together as one people, not just unified by a football team, but unified because we love each other and we're going to work to make a better life for everybody. That's our goal. Let's start that fight right now. Let's let today be a beginning and not an end. Let's let today be the kind of place and the kind of time for the change that we need to make. Thank you so much. Now let's get these bills signed. Um, Council President or any other members, would you like to say anything? You good? You sure? All right. Fair work week. Yeah. Fair work week. 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 Fair Done. We're done. We're done.